Hi, my name is Jacob. I'm with TACCOM HQ and today I'm going to mathematically prove that a structured barrel is stiffer than that of a standard barrel of the same mass. And to do this, we're gonna look at a second moment of area. And that is the amount of resistance a body can exude when a force is applied to it, trying to bend it, flex it. And this does encompass a number of complex equations. I'll be doing my best to be able to break down the fundamental logic of how these equations are set up and the result of that resistance. And to do this, we are going to start with a simple object such as these rectangles. And this is going to be the same object, but just rotate in 90 degrees. If we then add a length and then subject each like body to a force, we can intuitively see that it will take more force acting on this to bend it versus this because we have more mass, more material in the plane of the force axis. Alternatively, if we do the same, but now apply a force perpendicular to our start, now we see the rules are reversed. It will take more force to bend this. And this is the exact reason that I-beams are used in structural applications due to the fact of their immense rigidity. If we apply a XY plane to our simple example, well, actually, we now see a way that we can start setting up a mathematical equation to describe these forces in relationship to a given area of this body. But to do that, let's actually apply it to a barrel. And so we're going to be pulling a cross section of our barrel. So that will look like this. And we'll overlay a XY plane. The beautiful part about a barrel is it's a, at the very least a cross section of a barrel is it's going to be symmetric in a way that if we apply a force here, it doesn't matter how we rotate our object, that force and the act on the body is going to be the same. So it makes sense to evaluate the second moment of area according to its origin. In the equation, to be able to derive that is going to be this. And before anybody freaks out, I will break down each individual component to what this equation means. So JZ is quite simply, in this case, our origin. It's, we're going to be looking at the total amount of inflection about the XYZ, because that's our total body. The integral is a way to be able to evaluate a individual section of our barrel and the amount of resistance that this will be able to exude when force is applied. But we need to look at it from zero to R and we need to do that a infinite number of times and we need to take the sum of each individual piece and that will be our total resistance about the XY. So the integral is an infinite number of evaluations of each of these geometries from zero to R. X squared, Y squared, well, that's real simple. That's just the equation for this circle for any one point about the circle. DA, if we're going to be looking at this as being our line, we also need to give it a thickness to see how that body does behave when we subject a force. But we need that area to be infinitely thin. And if I go and blow this up, we see this. And we are looking to calculate the area along that entire infinitely thin piece. Well, if we look at, the, if we wanted to solve the area of our rectangle, we would just do length times width. We can do that same thing down here. Since this is infinitely thin, where it's just going to look like a simple line, that line is going to be the perimeter. So we have length and width. So we have 2 pi r equals l being the perimeter around 
our circle. The width is going to be an infinitely small section of R. So we'll say D of R. So we can rewrite our baseline equation as JZ equals the integral 0 to R x squared plus y squared times 2 pi r in respect to dr. We can plug r squared in for x squared plus y squared because that's the equation for any circle. And we can pull out our constants because that is not a variable. It's remaining the same. And then when we evaluate this integral, we get jz equals pi r to the fourth over 4. And that is the amount of resistance in the xy plane that this body will be able to exude. If we want to pull out, though, an individual axis, say the x or the y, we see that because we have a symmetrical object, that x equals y. So we have jz equals i of x plus i of y, where i of x equals i of y. And if I even go back up to here, this we could say is our i of x. This is equal to our i of y. And again, we plugged in r squared, and this is equal to our jz, being both the x and the y. So this is called the perpendicular axis theorem. And if i of x equals i of y, we have jz equals i of x plus i of x, which equals 2 i of x. And if we plug jz for pi r to the fourth over 4 and simplify this, we get i of x equals pi r to the fourth over 4. And there we have the amount of resistance of our object about x, which is equal to y, as an individual component. Now, if we apply this force to a barrel and a tube, that will be comparable to that of a structured barrel, because if we look at a cross-section of a uh, rod and a hollow tube, the center mass in respect to R is going to say be here. However, the center mass in respect to R, as the ID increases, it's going to be getting pushed out farther and farther. Because again, mass is going to be equal for each of these. And that's going to be a similar concept to a structured barrel. As the OD is going to be larger than that of a normal barrel, and so our center mass in relation to R on a cross section is getting pushed out just like a tube. So we have a rod, which is equal to a barrel, and here's our tube that for the sake of this example, we're going to say is similar to a structured barrel. To compare the resistance of a rod to that of a tube, we're going to look at the difference per area unit. And since we're looking at a cross section of each, that's actually really simple. The area of this circle is just going to be pi r squared. The area of our tube is going to be big pi r squared minus little pi r squared, being little for being the smaller radius. So if we look at the second moment per unit area of a rod, this will equal its resistance over A. And that will simplify S A of R equals R squared over 4. So that's the amount of resistance per area unit for a rod, a.k.a. a barrel. Now do that same thing with a tube. We have the moment of 
resistance per unit area of a tube is equal to I of X over area. And again, we have a difference of big OD versus small ID. So we can write this as had a momentary uh, technical error, apologize for that. We can write, rewrite that as pi r to the fourth over four via by pi r squared. So here's our big circle. And we're gonna subtract this from pi x r to the fourth over four divided by pi x r squared small circle. And when that simplifies, we get r squared times 1 plus x squared over 4. And this is where things get real interesting. Since x is a ratio of r, so R is our total distance, X of R is gonna be our ID. So if X of R was half, that means the ID is gonna be one half of the overall radius. So if we look at these two equations and say that X is equal to zero, well at that point we see that these two equations are, are the same. If X is equal to one, well at that point we see that a tube will be two times as strong as a rod. But this is impossible because this would require that our ratio for the ID of our tube to be identical to the ODR of our tube. And that would require an infinitely thin wall, not practical. However, if we do look at X equals half, now we see that a tube will be 50% stronger than that of a rod. And when this is compared to a simulation done in cell combined Eulerian Lagrangian of a structured barrel to that of a standard barrel of the same mass, in that simulation, they found it was 56% stiffer for the same weights. And this is real close to our computation here, looking at the difference in resistance per unit area of rod versus tube. So this is actually highly representative. That is the mathematical proof for a structured barrel being stiffer than that of a standard barrel. And in a brief explanation, why is this important to you as a shooter? Because if there's work being done on a barrel to, to flex it and send it into a sinusoidal whip, that work is gonna convert into heat and heat does affect harmonics. It's the reason that statistically there's a relevance to cold bore. It's the reason that we know that if you were to shoot on a cold day versus a warm day, you have two different groups. And that's because there's a intrinsic link and correlation between heat, temperature, harmonics. You can't change one without affecting the other. So if there's work being done to whip a barrel, that's heat. If you can make that barrel stiffer with a larger OD, with a higher second moment of area, that's less work that can be converted into heat, and in turn, that is going to improve its harmonic stability. If I draw another structured barrel that looks something like this, if we relate it back to our I-beam and the way that that is much stiffer and more rigid, than that of just a simple bar, you actually see that we have that structure of an I-beam all the way around our barrel reinforcing our bore. So that is a geometric and mathematical proof for a structured barrel being stiffer than that of a standard barrel. Thanks for watching.